This morning we've announced uh, the launch of our rights issue, although the rights issue doesn't officially start today, it starts on the 9th of October. But uh, essentially we are looking to raise uh, 3.2 billion shillings to finance the very uh, aggressive expansion growth that uh, the bank is contemplating over the next three to five years. Uh, we are offering uh, the rights at a discounted price of 145 shillings per share. Uh, yesterday, the closing price for the Standard Chartered share was 207, so immediately uh, the, right, uh, the shareholders will get a 30% uplift if the share, should the share price remain at the current levels. The reason why we gave such a good discount is to reward our shareholders who have supported us over a very long period of time. So overall, uh, we have very aggressive growth plans, we have very ambitious programs, and the proceeds of the rights issue will help us realize those. Now, you've just indicated that the process will be used to fund your growth. Please tell us more about your expansion strategy. Well, it's on many folds, uh, Ken. First of all, if you look at our consumer banking business, uh, we have refurbished our entire branch network. We have also intention of opening 10 new branches this year. We already we've executed about five. There's another five to go. Whether or not we'll be able to do five by December, we don't know. But our total investment program for branches was 10 this year. Those need to be funded. Those branches also, uh, we need people to, to run them. So we are rec heavily recruiting. Our staff complement has gone up from about 1,500 at the beginning of the year. And we're now looking at something like 1,700, almost 1,800. So we're building our capacity on staff. The other area that we're really focusing on is the corridor, trade corridors, the Africa, the Ch Kenya, China, Kenya, India, and Kenya Middle East trade corridors. We see, because those are the traditional trading corridors for, for Kenya, we believe that there's a huge potential in growing them. And then finally, the new finds on oil and gas, because with the discovery of oil and gas uh, deposits in Kenya, in Uganda, and in Tanzania, the whole East Africa region is looking extremely attractive. You also say to be expanding within the region and Ethiopia and Southern Sudan among the countries that are being mentioned in this line. When should we expect to see you in these countries? Indeed, they are. at the moment, Kenya, we have a business, in, a very strong business in Kenya, very strong business in Uganda, very strong business in Tanzania, continuing to power well. But within the greater East Africa, there's huge potential. Ethiopia, uh, you know, the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing countries in the world, huge population, offers great potential. Uh, very linked into Kenya in terms of its geographical and trading links. If you look at Southern Sudan, uh, newly independent, has a huge requirement for infrastructure against a natural link into Uganda and into Tanzania. You look at Rwanda as part of the East African community, albeit a smaller country, but again with huge potential on a different way. So those three countries uh, offer an attractive investment proposition for Standard Chartered, but within uh, a given period of time. So it won't happen immediately. Our, move, our, our entry to those countries will be driven mostly by customers, and uh, business uh, requirements. Moving on, Richard, you had a similar rice issue in 2010 where you raised 2.5 billion, and that particular rice issue was oversubscribed by 60%. What are your expectations from this particular call? Yeah, the 2007 rights issue was to finance the purchase of uh, the custody business from Barclays, so it's quite specific in terms of the use of funds. The subscription levels are very high. Uh, this year, uh, this rights issue is to finance the expansion of the business. I expect very high subscription levels. The good news is that the, the majority shareholder, Standard Chartered PLC, has indicated its desire to take up its full rights. And so, and the, from what I, when talking to our stockbrokers and other investors, they are very excited about the Standard Chartered share. So, I expect uh, full subscription and even a little bit of oversubscription. Now, you reported strong first half results where your pre tax profits climbed by 88% to 6.5 billion shillings. How will this additional capital impact on the performance? Our first half performance is actually a combination of the investment decisions that we made in the last four or five years, but driven mainly by the growth in assets. And our asset growth has eaten up all the excess capital that we had. Therefore, we need to raise more capital to continue this, gr growth, uh, this growth trajectory. And so the first half performance was incredibly good. Uh, we're very pleased and proud of it. The second half is looking pretty strong as well. Uh, but I think the challenge we face now is how to ensure that it's sustainable into 2013 and 2014. As you, as you know, uh, 2013 for Kenya 
is, is going to be a fairly difficult year because of the elections and everything that goes with it. And so just to make sure that we position this business to be able to withstand though, any shocks that may emerge from the electoral process and continue powering growth for 2014 and into 2015. Last week, Richard, what is your outlook for the banking sector in 2013? Is there a risk, especially political risk, considering that uh, we'll be having elections next year? The banking industry is very resilient and it's very strong. It's well regulated. The central bank keeps a very close eye on the activities of the banking industry. The recent uh, recapitalization requirements uh, continue to boost uh, the strength of the banking industry. So from that respect, I am very confident that the banking industry can withstand any shocks that may come in 2013. However, the banking industry does not sit in isolation from the rest of the country and the rest of the economy. Shocks affecting any part of the, of the economy will find their way into the banking industry. So for instance, if there's violence, if there's a slowdown in investment, if there's political interference of any way, uncertainty, it'll find its way into the banking industry. So that's where my, my, my worry lies. And there are also moves by the parliament to control interest rates. How is this going to impact on the business environment? Legislators right now are looking for ways and means of uh, introducing legislation that could be detrimental to the banking industry. Today, there's a, we understand that some parliamentarians are seeking to reintroduce um, um, interest rate controls on certain on government-owned banks. Now, to me, that, that, that's a very ridiculous proposition, given, given where we have come to as a country in terms of developing the banking industry. We no longer look at government banks. We no longer look at, look at uh, private banks. The banking industry is, is holistic. And so misadvised or ill-advised uh, moves by individuals to try and influence the banking industry is also another risk that uh, we need to, to watch out for. But overall, I'm confident that the banking industry will, will sustain momentum and emerge stronger in 2030.